hey everyone, so as you can probably guess from the title, we're gonna start a For the Worthy Master Mode ranged only playthrough. And um, let's go ahead and make a new character here. Oh, it's gonna be a uh, classic of course, not hardcore. <laughs> not gonna do hardcore yet. Um, let's just name them Susan... No, uh, what's a good name? Mm, I like cats, so I'm just gonna name this cats. Not very creative. And we're just gonna choose some random loadout, I don't really care. But yeah, we're gonna do For the Worthy ranged only playthrough. Oh, I kinda like that last one, but I can't go back, so I guess I have to find someone else that looks cool. Mmm, mm, this looks too weeby. Not that I should really be talking with the name of my channel and other social media. But yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing for the worthy range only master mode playthrough. And the reason I want to do it is because I've never really completed a for the worthy playthrough before. I've started one, but I've never completed it. I started uh, when I streamed on Twitch. I started a for the worthy melee only, and I stop because it was way too hard so we're not gonna do melee because melee i don't know I, I can't do regular melee master mode so doing a for the worthy melee is gonna be bad i always like my worlds being medium of course we're gonna just master mode and we're gonna do crimson because i prefer crimson over uh corruption except for a couple of things like i do want to get the dart rifle which is only in corruption so we're gonna, we're gonna have to like pull some strings for that as well as other things, but uh, yeah, this isn't gonna be like a raw footage playthrough because that's gonna take too long. Like most of my playthroughs take like 50 hours or so, so this isn't gonna be like a raw um, footage gameplay or anything. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of cuts, like right now while we wait for this world to load. Oh wait, I just realized that I forgot to input the for the worthy seed. So give me a sec. Okay, so let's try that again. So new world. Master, medium, crimson. I prefer medium because small worlds kind of get wonky with like wyverns and uh, other sky beasts, like the um, what are those called? The harpies. They kind of start spawning too far down to the ground if you try and just barely go up to the sky. So uh, no, for that reason, we're not gonna do any um small worlds and I think large worlds are just like way too large so we're gonna do for the worthy and if you don't know what for the worthy does it does a whole bunch of stuff that makes the game a lot harder it gives the enemies a lot more HP it gives the uh, bosses a lot more HP they do a lot more contact damage bunnies have explosives on them so if you like damage a bunny if you hit it and you're in range you basically die in one hit Trees drop live bombs, sometimes uh, pods drop live bombs, sometimes you have lava spawn on the surface. Bosses have like different AI and uh, they're different, like they do different attacks or they look different. It's just like really hard. But we're gonna attempt to do it on camera, so I hope you guys will enjoy this playthrough. Alright, boom, we're in. I think this is the world. I don't really know. I have too many worlds. I also don't remember what I named that world that we just created. But this one says December 24th, which is when I'm doing this. So I think it has to be this one. So let's get right into it. So right off the bat, what I like doing whenever I make a new world. First, let me fix the inventory. I like having my pickaxe on the first slot. Then I just go around and I hit every tree until we get some food. And even though the food that we get it only gives us minor bonuses, it's still pretty good to have um, at least a little bit of bonuses when you start a world. And as you can see, some of those trees are dropping bombs, and you do start with the demolitionist instead of the guide, because I believe... Uh, it has to do something with the world. You can get like soft locked if you don't have bombs, I think, or something like that. So I, I believe that's why you start with the demolitionist. I don't exactly know. But the first thing I like to do, we have some fruit as you can see. Now, now we're gonna get some wood. This is supposed to be ranged only, but the demolitionist is kind of ruining that, and I have already like failed the challenge. <laughs> Technically, I'm not trying to hit these enemies with my uh, axe, obviously. So till we actually make a, uh, uh oh. Okay, let's be real careful. All right, so I'm gonna get some wood, and then we will start constructing our base right away. This is so challenging, I have to keep jumping back and forth so I can actually get the wood. And we actually can't really construct our base right away just yet, because we also need to get some ropes. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. Uh, 
All right. I'm gonna go get some more wood, then we'll get some ropes, then I'll meet you back for our base construction. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. This is actually kind of good. We have some iron that's near the surface. So I'm gonna attempt to get some of it. Now I have to bail because of that blue slime. Uh, if you don't know, slimes usually ignore you on the surface as long as you don't damage them. But since the demolition is damaged the slimes, they're gonna... Uh, aggro on us until we kill them basically so yeah and we have some ropes it's really awesome so i'll meet you back at my spawn surface and then we're going to set up our base at the spawn all right so we're at our spawn area so i like to make my bases starting like this i use some ropes so we can use them as like a little bit of a leverage to get off the ground and i normally make my bases just like floating bases just to keep them off the ground it's a bit easier i feel like to deal with invasions like goblin invasions Pirate invasions, etc. When your base is off the ground. So I just put them off the ground just a tiny bit. Not too high because as you know, we we're starting without anything that negates fall damage. So I don't... Oh, god. Speaking of fall damage, I almost fell straight onto the slime, which would not have been good. But yeah, I, I want to um not make them too high because if we jump off of here, I don't want to die due to fall damage. So we're going to make them like somewhat high. As you can see, um the demolitionist aggro those slimes so now they're chasing me so this is going to be like the main platform where we put a, where we put a bunch of chests and i usually build my uh my bases for utility so it's not going to look pretty but it's going to be like you know for just for utility all right so we do that i put those four platforms here so that we can put our blocks here because we ha it has to be at least three blocks high so that we can walk underneath it so we're gonna do this. That's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now what I'm doing right now is just making the houses for our NPCs. And yes, they're gonna be living in these little tiny uh, little uh, I guess you can call them like storage containers not really apartments but uh, it's gonna be what is this like four blocks inside uh, four spaces five and ten blocks high so that's gonna be uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there we go we can do this and yeah, the reason I'm making the NPC houses like this is because it's annoying when the NPCs can just walk around and then they open doors during like blood moons and invasions. And it's just better to have them in one spot like this. And uh, as far as I know, uh, you can make like weird houses that don't actually require doors because you can use platforms and the platforms will count as doors. I'm not really sure why that happens, but it's been like that for a long time. Actually, while I do this, so you know, this is a ranged only uh, playthrough that I'm planning to do here. So our first goal is actually going to be to try to locate where the snow biome is. And the reason we want to go to the snow biome, there's a couple of reasons. First off, you can get the snowball cannon, which is a very good uh, early range weapon that uses uh, snow, snowballs as ammo, and snow. you can make snowballs out of snow blocks. And you know, that's very abundant in the snow biome. So we want to get to the snow biome for that reason. Another reason is because uh, the accessories that you can find in the snow biome, they're a little bit better than, well, just one accessory. The, the blizzard in a bottle is better than the cloud in a bottle. And the only thing that's better than the blizzard in a bottle, like in terms of bottles, would be the um, sandstorm in a bottle, which we're very unlikely to get from a pyramid. So, you know, Blizzard in a Bottle is our next best choice, so we're gonna go and try to get the Blizzard in a Bottle. And yes, yeah, so, so Snowball Cannon, Blizzard in a Bottle, and also when you explore the underground snow biomes, there are no worms, and worms are very, very annoying. And you can only imagine it's like, they're even more annoying here in, uh, for the worthy master mode. Where we take tons of contact damage, so for those reasons, so Snowball Cannon, uh, Blizzard in the bottle and no worms is why we want to rush the snow biome as soon as possible. Not to mention that we can also get the uh, flurry shoes, I think they're called. The boots that give us, that are basically like the Hermes boots, but I believe they let you like run faster on snow or something like that. I'm not too sure. 
But yeah, we, we, the accessories for the most part are better, and Snowball Cannon is extremely good to get early on, especially if you're doing a range build like we are doing right now. So if you're wondering about the guide, I, I believe, I haven't like fully played through a For the Worthy playthrough before, like I've mentioned, but I believe the guide will be spawning. Uh, it'll be like the first NPC that spawns when we have a vacant house. So he should be spawning uh, like tomorrow or whatever the next day is. So that's what's going on with the guide. And this is what our houses will look like basically. I'm only going to put one torch for now because we barely have gel. And yeah, these are valid houses as you can see. It's valid. See? The demolitionist already moved in there. And the reason it's valid is because of the platforms. They count as doors. And as long as we have a light source then, you know, it'll count as a valid source for us. So we're going to go ahead and patch this up. And then we're going to try to find the snow biome. Now the only thing that could be wrong is if the snow biome does not, uh... If, we, if, if we're surrounded by... Oh, there's the guide already, so we don't even have to wait until tomorrow. But yeah, if we're, we're going to check to the left and right to see if we can locate the snow biome first and then go to the underground snow biome. Now if the left and right has crimson and desert, uh, we probably might have to ignore them because we can't really get past crimson. And the desert will be kind of annoying to traverse because of the vultures that might kill us. But yeah, we're gonna try our best here. Now what we should do is make a pickaxe. I'm mean, not a pickaxe, a bow. And make some arrows. So that we can at least have a very early range weapon. But we'll do that some other time because I gotta get out of here before these guys can kill me. So let's go all the way to the right and see if we can find where the snow biome is. Or at least as far away as we can. We're allowed to go. While we're walking there, I do want to mention. I, I well, I didn't acknowledge just living tree first and foremost, so we should probably explore the living tree. But yeah, I'm probably gonna just make these episodes. I'm just trying something new, so I don't know like how long we're gonna really roll with this. But I do want to at least you know try to finish this playthrough. And the episodes are gonna be like no longer than like 20, 25 minutes or so, heavily edited, so you guys can skip the boring stuff like this. And by boring stuff, I mean me collecting um, stone so that we could make some arrows and a bow. So let me go ahead and make a bow right now. So yeah, we have a bow and arrows, which would be good for us right now. We have a little bit of defense against enemies, but we're not really trying to... I should just delete this sword because we're not using swords. At least we're going to try not to. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to just, uh, you know, cut out the boring stuff like that and, you know, try and focus on cool stuff for you guys to watch. So let's just like take a gander down. Oh god, is that a zombie right above us? Oh, okay. So I'm pretty sure these zombies will just utterly destroy us. So we gotta be real careful. I'm gonna try to figure something out. Give me a second. Okay, so my bright idea was just to tunnel down. All right, we're gonna try to avoid combat until we have better weapons because most enemies will kill us in one hit. With contact damage, especially in master mode, like it doesn't matter what armor we wear. I'm not gonna be wearing armor for. Oh god, yeah, that's also another thing that I should have noted. Well, I, I think I did note, but the some the pots usually have life bombs in them, so you want to be careful with that. All three of those pots had life bombs, and we got some good stuff. We have oh some shurikens. That's technically range damage. That's pretty nice. We have a leaf wand. I might actually use these for like building some cool stuff later on. I'm not much of a builder, but I'll try my best to make cool things for you guys to see. And we have some recall potions which are really nice as well, that'll take us back home. But yeah, uh, I forgot what I was saying, but the pots are very dangerous, and we have ourselves in a very bad situation. I want to explore the rest of the living tree to see if there's anything else down here. Oh, as you can see, like that's another thing about For the Worthy. You'll find lava a bit further up than normal. Sometimes on the surface as well, so you gotta watch out for that. I should probably put some- uh oh, wait, hold on. Uh, let's just recall home because I don't feel too safe. It looks like that's the end of the living tree. So let's just get the heck out of here. Alright, since it is nighttime, we're gonna go ahead and start making a elevator because it's very unsafe for us to be exploring during the night because of how dangerous the mobs are for us, the eyes and the zombies. We have no mobility, we can't jump over them. So we're gonna make a elevator. And if you don't know what a elevator is, it's basically an elevator that goes straight down the hell and it's good to make set one of these up whenever you start a playthrough because you want like you're gonna want like direct access to hell uh, for a couple of occasions so what I like to do when I start a new world I make my base 
And then at nighttime, if I'm not in the cave, if, if I can't find a natural cave, I just start making my elevator. And then eventually we'll run into a cave and we could explore from there. We're not trying to go directly to hell right now, we're just trying to start the elevator, and if we find a cave or something cool, then we'll go down the cave. So that's what we're doing right now. Some goals I do have for this playthrough, I want to attempt to kill every boss. I don't know if you've seen some of my other videos where I show off like my trophy case from a ranged only run that I did on Twitch. Uh, there's like a cool trophy case I have, I kind of like it, it's like my proudest building I've made in this game in like the seven years I've played, which is very sad. But yeah, I'm, ver I'm very proud of that building. You know what actually, while we're doing this, we should be making some ropes to start our little elevator. Like this will make it so that we can access our, um, the rope that we have upstairs as well. So we should make a little like rope ladder. That way we don't have to die every time we want to come down here. And we can't use all of our- oh, oh, we're probably gonna end up using all of our ropes though. Yeah, that's most of them. I'm gonna get the star because we are gonna be using the star cannon on this playthrough for sure. Like, this is a master mode playthrough, so I have to pull out all the stops basically, so... The star cannon is pretty good. I don't like using mini shark in my playthroughs or like, you know, the typical overpowered gun weapons that people like to use. But, this is a uh, for the worthy master mode, so I'm gonna pull out all the stops. I never used the Star Cannon, like I've never once used it in a single playthrough, but I should probably use it now because I know it's, I know it's pretty powerful and we're gonna need all the firepower we can for the bosses, so. Oh yeah, so some goals, I wanna like beat all the bosses and I wanna create a cooler looking trophy case. I think the one that I made is kind of cool, but it's like nothing compared to what other people do. And do you guys see that chest over there? Uh, we gotta get that chest. And avoid the jellyfish because that will probably one hit us. So give me. A Can't tell if it's a golden chest or just a regular wooden chest, because uh, you're not you're not really supposed to find golden chests until you reach the caverns layer. And this is like still, it might technically still be the surface layer, but uh, and for the worthy, you do get cabins that spawn like really high up. And cabins usually have a golden chest in them, so that could be a golden chest. I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and get rid of this jellyfish first. Alright, it is dead. That's good because we're gonna get some glow sticks. And you know, glow sticks are always nice to see what the heck you're doing underwater. And it is a regular wooden chest. Ooh, a blowpipe. That's actually a not too bad of a range weapon for us. So we could use that in, you know, synergistically with our wooden bow here for right now. Oh, wait, I, gotta, I just realized that I can drown. Let me not kill myself. There's also something weird going on to the left. So maybe we should check that out. What do you guys think? I think we'll check it out. So let me go ahead and get this ore and then we'll, you know, we want to loot the chest as well, like actually collect the chest, use it for later, and then we'll go check out what the heck's going on to the left of us. And there's also something going on at the bottom, so this is... Uh oh, that's not good. Those guys can scale the water. I guess they can't make it through that little hole. So I actually do like getting clay blocks as soon as possible. I try to amass a bunch of them whenever I can because I like to rush herb farms and if you don't kill a boss, we're probably not going to be attempting bosses for a little bit. So without bosses, the only way to get like things to plant your herb seeds or herb, whatever you want to say, would be from making clay pots. So I always try to like rush clay plots so I can start my herb farm ASAP. And another, another thing I should mention, um, you could always find out what uh, For the Ready does by just by checking the wiki, but it does make veins of ore a lot larger. That's why this, like, all the ore we're seeing, there's, like, very large veins. That's uh, For the Worthy. It makes veins of uh, ore and, like, resources a lot larger than you would normally find in typical worlds, so that's something else to know. We'll be finding a bunch of ore. I also think that there is also, like, a slight mining buff like you can there's like a slight uh you can mine faster basically in for the worthy worlds you get like a slight boost to your mining speed capabilities this is taking so long because of the extra enemy defense and more hp but we got rid of those guys we'll get the cobwebs let's take out our glow sticks so we can actually see what the heck's going on down here we have some more ore so that's really good oh a gnome hmm yeah, so if you don't know, when you uh, see a gnome, you can lead the gnome back to the surface and that gnome will turn into a statue. Only thing is that this might be a little bit hard to lead the gnome up to the surface down here, so I'm gonna have to finesse that. 
the gnome died in the lava, so never mind. My plan was to like lead it over here and then put platforms for it to jump up. And then we could get it to the surface like that, but it died, so never mind. The gnome statues aren't too important, but they do give you some extra luck, which was a stat that was added in 1.4. It's like a hidden stat. It doesn't matter too much, it just like barely affects uh, your drop rates for um, rare items, but it's not too important. Uh oh, worm. Uh oh no. Ooh, that's like almost half HP. They can probably two-shot us easily. I'm gonna try my best not to die here, but they do take kind of a while to kill. It took a lot less damage, I think, because we didn't get hit by the head. Because if you get hit by the head of these segmented enemies like this, that's usually where the brunt of their damage comes from. Kind of like the Destroyer of Worlds, so if you can just like strafe around, at least not get hit by the head, it'll probably be okay. All right, awesome. Cool, so while we're down here, the merchant spawn. And that's good because that means we can buy torches as well as ropes from the merchant. Assuming we can get some more money because uh, we're gonna need that at some point. So why don't we go back to the surface? You should always put your fallen stars in your ammo slot. That way they don't take up an inventory slot. If you don't have anything else better to put there, at least. So let's buy some stuff, and then we'll be on our way again. Okay, so I went ahead and took the liberty to just do a couple of things. So we have a iron pick, I mean, an iron, um, I mean a lead pick. So we made a lead pick, we made a tungsten bow, and we have a pretty decent modifier. Got some fire arrows, got some regular arrows, we got some ropes, we got a couple torches. And still have some food. I uh, made a random chest called random S-word stuff. Because I can't say the S-word on YouTube anymore. Well, I never did, but I came from Twitch, so I can't say that word anymore. On YouTube at least, so we have a stuff for random S word whenever we come back. Of course, um, we don't have enough torches. Um, by torches I mean we don't have enough chests, so we don't will expand this as time goes. But this is how I like to like set up my base. I like to put the chest above us, like the chest above or below us, so that when we stand next to a crafting station, we'll have the options from the chest with the with the, the contents inside of it. If that makes sense. So like we use the chest, and we can like go here, and we can still craft stuff depending on what's inside of the chest and which crafting station we're inside of. Same thing with the chest at the bottom basically. Or like any chest. You can like put it anywhere and just stand in front of it. So I like putting them at the bottom and like at the top of the crafting stations for this exact reason. And we're gonna collect some seeds for our flow pipe. Then we're gonna start heading out to the snow biome. I guess we can do that simultaneously. So why don't we start heading to the right first to see if we can find the snow biome. If you're wondering why I'm not wearing armor, it's because it really doesn't matter. Because, uh... Yeah, it just, like, armor doesn't really matter at all. When you start master mode. Because you just die in a couple of hits. The armor that we are gonna do, that we are gonna try to get, is gonna be... Uh, what's it called? Fossil armor? That, from the underground... Desert? That's because it offers you range bonuses and, you know, this is a range playthrough. So that's what we're gonna start with, at least. Uh, we're gonna do Fossil Armor. Let's try out the, the um, Blowpipe. I never really use it, but it seems like a good weapon. Wow, the fire rate is pretty high and it does decent damage, decent base damage. That's cool. But yeah, let's go ahead and try to find the Snow Biome before it gets too late. Oh, we got pretty lucky. We got one of those, like, weird gold portal things and gave us a, a bunch of gold. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did buy a piggy bank and it's exactly for this reason. If you can, buy a piggy bank really early because it's cheaper. Like, I think the further you progress, like, the more expensive the piggy banks get. So you want to get them really early. Also, um, yeah, just for that reason, like, we lose our money on death, so you want to buy a piggy bank so you stop losing money like that. And we have a bunch of clay blocks as well right here. So we're gonna get the clay block. Nice, some day blooms. So that could at least get us started with a little day bloom farm. And as you can see, there is surface lava. So get used to seeing that in For the Worthy. You're gonna see that a lot, a lot of surface lava constantly. Uh, let's check this out, see if we have anything good. And this is basically the exact same loot that we got last time, so nothing too special. But let's head back up. It's almost nighttime, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to find the snow biome, but I will attempt. Well, we found the desert. Now, I don't know if that means that, like, the snow biome can still be on the other side. But we're gonna continue going, just in case. Because I, I, I wanna explore the snow biome first, like I uh, stated earlier. Dude, the blowpipe is so good for dealing with these vultures. Surprisingly, we have like decent firepower even though we just started thanks to the silver bow as well as uh, the blowpipe. Because they both have pretty good 
modifiers, so yeah. These are definitely gonna be our main weapons that we're gonna be uh, using for the time being. I got killed in one hit by the demon eye. Because it's night time, so. Yeah, maybe we'll try to find the snow biome some other time. So back down we go. Uh, I probably should be trying to end this episode at some point, I think. Because I don't want to, like, just end it abruptly. <laughs>